first of all, we just want to thank everybody who came out tonight. Uh, everybody came out to support DC Beer. Everybody came out to support us. This is really what craft brewing and local brewing is all about. So just from, from myself and from Jeff as well, thank you guys very much for your interest and your support. We really appreciate it. Woo! So I'm, I'm Brandon Stahl, the CEO. I'm the president and head brewers. So uh, the company right now is really just the two of us. And so is there is Eric around here? Eric, Eric, come on over for a second. So Eric's been working with us, putting in a lot of time, volunteering, and uh, Eric. <laughs> Eric's a great guy. He's helped us out a lot. He's had a lot to do with the beers that you guys are drinking right now. So uh, Woo! applause for Eric. Eric. Yeah! Woo! So you know. Um, of uh, what we could talk about. I mean, I think the, the only thing that really, you know, is, uh, I don't know, it, is I think really interesting is, is the idea of we had to go through to open a, dis a brewery right here in the district. And it wasn't, you know, quite as easy as it might be in some other places in the country because it just hadn't been one here in so long. So Jeff and I found that we really had to do a lot of educating, uh, you know, the folks who are, who are running the city, educating the, the folks down at D.C. City Council, educating the folks at D.C.R.A., educating the folks at the Department of Health as, you know, exactly what we were. And we're not a restaurant. We're not Department a Department of Public Health. Health. Woo! We're, uh, <laughs> Jeff's wife works Public Health. Woo! Anyway, you know, it, at first everybody said, well, why hasn't there been a brewery here in so long? And nobody knew. People thought, well, you know, maybe it's just because the laws that are on the books prohibit there from being a brewery. So Jeff and I's first step, like we said, well, let's let's see if that's really the case. So we, you know, we started looking through the laws, looking through the ABRA laws. We found out that not only was that not the case, but there is in fact a brewery license already on the books. So we said, okay, well, that's that's a sign that you know maybe we should continue. So you know, we took it day by day. We raised our money. We put together an offering document. Um, we bought a lot of expensive stainless steel equipment. We bought a lot of expensive stainless steel equipment. That's, that's probably one thing you really need to do if you're going to open a brewery. Um, yeah. So, so you know, we took about I don't know, two and a half years total, I'd say, from when we thought of the idea one night. But the best thing about this whole whole business for us is that Jeff and I are friends. We've been friends before the business started, and we're so far continuing to stay friends, and, and uh, there's no signs of that turning around at all. But it's great to be able to go into business with a friend of yours and have it work and have people appreciate what you're doing. So now what I'd like to do is turn this over to my friend and let him talk about the beers that we make, why we make them, and what makes them special. Woo! Woo! I, I just want to start off and thank everyone for um, making my job easier, giving me the best uh, form of gratification I think anyone can get, you know, is to see the fruits of your labor make so many people feel happy and better about themselves, depending on what's happening on today. So, cheers to everyone. So, yeah, the, uh, the beers, I mean, what can I say? America loves its pale ale. And um, I kind of started, you know, drinking a Sierra Nevada one day. Uh, that's uh, that's kind of what led me into my uh, you know foray into brewing, and it's also kind of what led me to develop the, uh, the public ale. Uh, it's a very um, semi-traditional pale ale. Um, this is a Cascade hop, which uh, Sierra Nevada made famous. Um, yeah, from there I, I take it a more a little more hop forward, as I'm sure uh, you know everyone has commented on and, and told me, hey, this is not quite a pale ale, it's more than IPA. <laughs> But hey, what can you do? It's it's nice to have that kind of uh, freedom of creativity uh, in your work. So um, yeah, and it seems to be uh, getting good grades on all the good uh, online websites. Which um, but yeah, as far as the two that aren't so, or one is going to be readily available now, but the porter. Um, I trained in a traditional English group pub, and uh, Porter is definitely my favorite style, Robust Porter in particular. Uh, the one that you have tonight uh, is definitely coming from kind of that that English brewing pedigree that more or less kind of shaped me with who I am today, with you know kind of my flavors and my profiles. And uh, so yeah, I just kind of wanted to do like a good uh, tip of the hat to a good uh, you know English style Robust Porter. 
uh, uses, except for the base malt, it's uh, and the yeast, it's all English ingredients. Uh, Thomas Fawcett, great malt from England. Um, Thomas Fawcett! Thomas Fawcett! Um, but so yeah, it's definitely got the heavier chocolatey notes, uh, not too hoppy. Kind of wanted to do that, just to show people I've got a one trick pony. Um, and then the other uh, option we have tonight is the Corruption IPA, which uh, I don't know how many of, of you have had. But it's Everyone in here! Oh, yeah. Right here! Thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna blush or something. Here. Uh, but yeah, the, the Corruption. Um, there are so many great hop varieties out there, so many things to choose from. But at the end of the day, you gotta go with something you like, and that is commercially available. So, thus enter the Columbus Hop. Yeah. Yeah. It's a single hop IPA. Uh, Columbus is not necessarily known for its aroma and bittering characteristics, but, you know, I said, hey, I'm, I'm throwing it to the wind, because, I mean, that's kind of how Brandon and I have done it this far. It's like you have conventional advice, and then you have, you know, him and I conversing, and, and you know, and luckily it's been a good, it's been a good melt like that. So I just said, you know, we're, we're going to do it this way. We're going to make it almost, uh, almost half, half is, you know, more bitterness. Sorry, double bitterness, partner, double bitterness of the tail, and trying to follow up something with uh, something like the public so while uh, the well received. I didn't want to have something where people went too far and they said, hey. I don't know what I'm drinking. I don't know if it's the IPA or the public. So, you know, the calm is up. Not a lot of people use it, uh, like I was saying, for uh, Annex. But I like the deep, resiny kind of. Sorry if I'm kind of going off on a tangent here. Uh, I often don't get to do this, so. Um, but you know, it's real piney. Uh, for me, it kind of. I, I spent all eight hours in the kind of reminds me of the kind of dank environment. They were pretty good eight hours though. They were real good eight hours. We got we got <laughs> a deep fried bacon out there. Oh, it was fantastic. <laughs> we got it in. Don't forget this was taken care of pretty early. Really so. Really so. Um, but yeah, it's obviously stronger than the public. Well, not obviously, but I think it's stronger than the public. It is. And um, yeah, just uh, you know, kind of basically a basic two row. Uh, special, you know, some little bit of victory, a little bit of sea tone in there uh, for coloring and some flavor, and uh, thus is the corruption. Uh, works out to about almost 45 pounds of hops per batch. Yeah. So I pack it in there. It's like a hop baby. Try pulling that out. Yeah. So, uh, but no, those are the beers, and uh, I hope everyone has a great night. Um, Remember to drink responsibly. Yeah, I don't want to say anything about it, but these are strong beers, so enjoy. All right. Woo! 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 Thank you guys for coming to the day in the Dark Cave Lane Warehouse. This event's just fantastic. So thank you very much. Yay!